Hello, and thank you for tuning into my video series, You're Indicted and Facing Prison, Now What? My name is Mark Gladstein, and in 2006, I too was indicted and convicted of a felony where I wound up losing my medical license. To call this time period a life-altering event at best is an understatement, and I can empathize with where all of you are at this point in your lives. With work, though, I was able to get my license reinstated in full in 2010, and my takeaway is that prison's temporary. Eventually, you're going to leave, and so it's important, as unusual as this may appear, to have in addition to your personal narrative release plan, a release plan rather, an allocution, but the release plan here already before you get into your pre-sentence interview, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Mental illness. My goal in this series is to provide you with the information you'll need to navigate <clears throat> and survive these times because knowledge together with, with preparation is gonna help build back the confidence you'll need throughout this process. Since you heard the Department of Justice and the FBI have been asking questions, their case probably is mostly complete. And to go along with that, they have a 98% conviction rate. So delaying to take the next step is at your peril. So what is that step? It's getting a proper legal, getting a proper legal defense team, meaning that you want someone who practices federal criminal defense in federal court. But just hiring a team that doesn't just mean that they need to have experience. They need to have a proven track record of successfully defending cases like yours. Plus, this needs to be a good fit because it's going to be the two of you. And if you're not comfortable, then ultimately you may not get the best outcome possible. The choices now that you make today are going to make a better tomorrow for you. Should you have any questions, please do not hesitate to call and consider engaging my services at 240-888-7778 because this is your life and your future. I've come through it and I'm hoping, you'd, hoping to pave the way for you to follow. It's important to prioritize and evaluate cases of abuse or trauma. Whether or not you believe it was a contributing factor, seeking an expert recommendation in this particular example from a prosecutor is a wise decision, meaning that if your attorney feels that, and you can please speak up, but if two of you feel that you have a, you know, a medical issue that it can't hurt being evaluated, if you don't want to involve the prosecutor, great, you don't have to. If the attorney can find a, a someone to evaluate you. And then at the end of the evaluation or a couple of evaluations, if you feel that you do not want to use that information, you don't have to. If you feel you want to use the information, it's there. At the same time, if, if you're not aware or don't have someone in mind as to who you know, you could speak with a psychiatrist, psychologist, then seeking an expert recommendation from the prosecutor is a wise move on many levels. For the most part, if in fact you use their reg what the what their re what their expert tells you, their expert psychologist or psychologist psychiatrist tells you, and they use that in court, they're going to have a tough time overruling it or saying that it's not really a you know it's a doctor for hire. You're using their re their recommended physician. Many particularly high-strung white-collar defendants believe that they're fine when they may not be. Therefore, it's recommend, it's a, it is recommended to get that second opinion consultation for their own benefit. Ironically, probably I fell into that group and I was getting counseling. I just never shared it with my attorney. So not very smart. This is many a time when their list of prescriptions becomes available due to the high incidence of mental illness in highly functioning adults, both in and out of press prison, addressing this issue now can be a major mitigating factor. If you're already at this point and you don't have the time to wait for future videos, please give me a call and we can discuss your situation one-on-one. -on -one. Once again, my number is 240-888-7778. So for FYI, for your information, judges prefer to speak with treating physicians in addition to experts during the sentencing hearing. They want to, they want to speak with a doctor that's treating you that doesn't take away the need for experts in the field, but it doesn't replace it either. The defendant can be an exceptionally bright, highly functioning and successful person. And if this sounds familiar to you, you may want to pursue, pursue this with your attorney. Highly skilled, motivated and work long hours for money, promotion and privileges. You're obsessive, compulsive and perfectionist. I raise my hand. Suffer from depression or anxiety just due to the stresses of where you're un that you've been under, not even counting this event. You have an overwhelming desire to be personally and financially successful. Boom, my hand went up. This desire may cause a general law-abiding person to engage in inappropriate or illegal behavior. And I'll say yes. The defendant in this particular example can be, you know, you may be diagnosed as being bipolar. I was not. According to the latest statistics from the United States Sentencing Commission, only 6% of inmates received downward departures for diminished capacity.
This is even though half the inmates having symptoms are, of mental illness once they arrive in prison. This raises questions about whether the judges are insensitive to mental health concerns. And I'll answer that by saying probably not. Probably it's because they're unaware. Alternatively, the problem may lie with defense counsel who may not be taking the time to fully investigate their client's social and psychological histories. And this I credit, I got some of this from Tess Lopez, a probation officer. To engage my services or have your concerns answers, please give me a call today at 240-888-7778. Once again, this is my personal cell and I answer and return all of my own calls. You can also get additional information for free through my website at pprsus.com. P is in Paul, P is in Paul, R is in Robert, S is in Sam, us.com, which stands for Physician Pre-Sentence Report Service. I appreciate you taking the time to tune in today and I have a good day. I hope it was helpful.